Hi there, and welcome to the Alt.Narrative podcast. I'm your empathetic and relentlessly curious host, Rich Harris. I've been a corporate marketer and sociology nerd for most of my two decades long career, observing trends and patterns in human behavior on the internet. On this podcast, we will explore the impact of the digital world on humanity and modern day social dynamics. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to check out the website at altnarrative.com for more content. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Alt.Narrative podcast. My name is Rich Harris. This is episode eight, and today I will be reading uh, a blog post that I had written entitled, The Poor Kid in the Rich Neighborhood. I was born in Fountain Valley, California on December 4th, 1974. My parents divorced when I was around nine years old. We were living in a typical condominium complex in Orange County, Definitely not upscale, but not really in the poorer neighborhoods either. We never really had a lot of money while my parents were together, but both parents had even less money after they split up. I was with my dad most of the time, and he moved around a lot. I went to several elementary schools in my district in Orange County, a new one almost every year until after I finished my first year in middle school, 7th grade, when we moved to Bend, Oregon. I spent the back half of my elementary school experience up the street from some of the wealthiest communities in Southern California, surrounded by friends whose Ivy League parents were attorneys, investment bankers, doctors, all living in some of the most affluent neighborhoods in Newport Beach, Balboa, Crystal Cove, East Bluff, etc. Their driveways were packed with Jaguars, Mercedes, BMWs, Porsches, and pretty much any rich person's car you could imagine back then. I remember attending sleepovers at their houses and I felt like I was in Disneyland, like, people actually live daily lives like this? Their houses were huge, many had live-in maids and housekeepers, their backyards complete with giant swimming pools, trampolines, well-manicured half-acre yards. I'm pretty sure that most of those homes today would sell for a cool three or four million each. I also remember going home after some of those sleepovers either to my mom's tiny apartment in Costa Mesa or back to my dad's house all sad and bummed out. He usually had us living in a place that, while a decent middle class home in the late 80s, nine times out of ten he was so cash broke from mismanaging his finances that our car was more often than not a beat up old car or van, barely running, cars that you'd normally see driven by folks in much more extreme poverty actually living in their vehicles. I learned down the road that he was constantly in debt to his own father and refused to get a job working for somebody else, just out of pride. But more on that later. As a kid, this juxtaposition of environments between how my divorced parents were living paycheck to paycheck, in and out of dysfunctional post-divorce relationships, and how my friends' parents were living, little did I know how my internalization of these lifestyle comparisons would impact my brother and I much later in life in a very negative way. The tension and stress in my home environments, heavily vocalized in my dad's house in particular, was very clearly tied to a lack of money versus the happiness, fun, and peace I was perceiving at all my wealthy friends' houses. This really set the tone for what I would later on in life have anxiety about on an almost constant basis. As a young adult, I lacked the education, the resources, the mentality, and the self-esteem to be responsible with money. I had no idea how to set educational and financial goals for myself. The unstable home environment left me developmentally stunted, rendering me unable to deal with the hard life stuff that lie in the road ahead, having zero courage to face my adversity head on. It was the perfect storm of childhood stress, jealousy, envy, lack of self-worth, and hopelessness that my naturally optimistic and happy self would eventually succumb to in my adult financial life. That wraps it up for today's Alt.Narrative podcast episode. Thank you for listening, and please check us out online at altnarrative.com for more content.